All right, welcome back. It is the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, away from the Niger Delta. We need militancy. We are moving to Borono State and talking about how the internally displaced persons are about being, uh, you know, you know, reintegrated into their homes and, of course, into the society. Let me just give you a bit of a background now. Internally displaced persons in Midgree have vacated their camps ahead of the November 30 deadline for the closure of all camps by the Borono State government. Now, a report, uh, a reporter who covered that, uh, who visited some camps on Wednesday reported that most of them have been deserted by displaced persons. The state government had on Saturday provided provided cash and food items to the IDPs ahead of the planned closure of the camps to enable them move to their respective homes. Now, some of the IDPs from Guaza, Monguno and Guzamala local government areas said that household heads were given 100,000 naira each, uh, while housewives were given 50,000 naira each to facilitate their return home. The state commissioner for reconstruction, rehabilitation and resettlement, Mustafa Gubio, said the development was part of the government's commitment to close all IDP camps in Midgari in line with its resettlement program. Well, that's just a background. You know, specifically now, they want uh, people to get back to normal living, uh, normal life, and of course, get reintegrated in the society after, you know, all of uh, the issues that have, you know, bedeviled that particular region. Uh, talk of uh, the insurgency, the Boko Haram attacks, and um, people, uh, uh, the government wants people, or wants people to get back to being normal, if there's anything like that, you know. So mercy. They are giving a hundred thousand naira to heads of um, household, while the wives will be getting fifty thousand naira to start life again. Well, um, that conversation is encompassing. Let's not also forget that, according to statistics, we're looking at uh, about one hundred and twenty to one hundred and thirty thousand uh, persons. Uh, while you also have, I mean, generally in internally displaced persons in the Borono State camp, where you have, uh, you know, this accommodating sentence now. Uh, 120 to 130. I mean, looking at the picture, I mean, looking at that number is so much. And some of these persons have lived in this camp for a very long time. It's very it long can be, it can be, uh, it can be really, really disheartening. Now, first of all, it's a good thing to say that uh, we have a plan to reintegrate these persons uh, into our society, right? Or taking them back to their ancest ancestral homes or their mm. homes, and so they can continue their lives and livelihood. But the big question is, and I'm hoping that, you know, we get answers, is um, how safe, you know, you begin to ask yourself, the reason why they were displaced in the first place was because of these attacks, the mm -hmm. insecurity uh, in this particular region or in this state. And that, that's why they were displaced. So if you're saying that you want them to return uh, or they're asking, because they've also uh, requested asking UNICEF that, please and please, they would like to go back to their homes mm -hmm. because, you know, life can never be the same uh, really uh, as much as you want them. to look at it. As much mm -hmm. as you say you're getting the support, you know, from uh, different donor bodies, including government. It's also, you, you want to talk about the corruption, but that's another one. Let's, so let me just stay, you know, with this line of uh, uh, thought. Mm -hmm. Now, so the point is how safe is it for them to go back going back to their homes what measures have the government put in place to ensure that you know security is protected that they are not exposed to more attacks now let's also not forget that for most persons agriculture is actually a source of livelihood for them and you know uh, their farms and farmlands have been, been destroyed, destroyed so end, what yeah. provisions have been made you know at the end of the day how protected are they can they go back to the farms and continue you know it's not it's not enough to say you know because i feel like with every other thing we feel like we throw money and that's enough mm. No, so we, we constantly we, we constantly throw money uh, everything. I mean, you also want to see that with the fact that we're removing subsidy and we're saying <laughs> we're paying five thousand naira to forty <laughs> uh, million Nigerians, <laughs> you know, to. Uh, cushion the effect of it but you know throwing money doesn't really solve the problem no, we're not talking about the basics so it comes back to the infrastructure what has government put in place mm. uh you need to put in place have we if those houses were actually destroyed they were burnt down mm. uh, do we have new buildings do we not have new houses uh, how yeah, you know all of, of that thought. so you also have you want to talk about education let's not forget that yesterday in the news remember that the niger the niger state um uh, state government is com is, is reporting is also complaining of the fact that boko haram is asking uh, you know pressuring parents to withdraw their kids from school 
And so, so those who would have to go to school, I can't even imagine people who have lived in the camp for how long. I mean, you have some women, elderly women, 2018, they have lived there, they have kids. Do you know what that means? So going back is a lot. Now, let's also talk about, you know, psychological evaluation. What, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we also remember a time where uh, we hear reports of how these women are sexually exploited. I think that story or report was about 2016 or thereabout, mm -hmm. where, you know, uh, some military men were allegedly involved. It was proven at some point that um, they were um, asking sex. So some of this food, uh, and we see that, it's a common practice. I mean, we see that with the NSAS, uh, you know, palliative that was given. Uh, cattle, cartons of noodles and what have you and people actually hiding them. Mm. So you see the fact that people are sexually women are sexually Lost. harassed and uh, you know um, uh, abused in the camp just because you need to survive. They take advantage of you so you can get you know a piece of noodle uh, if, it is, if that's a piece or you know maybe a pack of noodles to eat mm. a slice of bread and what have you and some of this you know product and what have you we found them in stores and markets according to that report. So th there's a lot of trauma that have gone through so it's a enough to a say it's it, it's okay Tremendous. as much as it sounds very brilliant to say internally displaced persons should be relocated back to their homes they are also asking but i'm thinking that as a government how proactive have we been over the years mm. i feel like we're just very reactive we just wake up and we act mm. so what structures have we put in place what strategies what have we done mm. from ensuring that mentally that they are okay to ensuring that they are going back to a safe space is protected and mm. that they can go back to their life you know go back to farming and other businesses and and the kids can actually go back to school so so, but I don't know if we can actually, if all of these things are put in place, and um, I'm hoping that in the next minute we're able, you know, to answer that particular question. Yes, because we need um, an, uh, um, answers to all of these questions that you have posited, because it would not make sense uh, having lived them. Um, under captivity or maybe in camps rather and having, uh, you know, been uh, secluded from normal life and you are being tr uh, asked to uh, go and reset so with uh, normal living when uh, you don't even know where the next meal would come and in as much as they gave you a hundred thousand or a hundred and fifty thousand uh, for both uh, the, the, the father or the head of the house and uh, the housewife. At the point, of course, that money will be exhausted. You have mentioned a very salient point. You talked about uh, farmlands being destroyed. And the, the bulk of the people, they're, they're agrarians, they're actually farmers. You know, if they don't have, you know, arable lands to, you know, cultivate their crops, at the end of the day, we'll still be talking about uh, food insecurity. We'll be talking about people going to bed without um, enough, uh, you know, in their stomachs. Uh, then again, these children, they have uh, gone through untold trauma. Uh, trauma. They have, you know, seen you know very harrowing experiences in over this, that time you know so basically i want to be well in as much as uh, i would want to give uh, the Borno state government the benefit of a doubt i just want to believe that uh, they have plans you know to not just uh, bring them back to their normal life, but they want uh, them to go back to schools and also securing schools because uh, over time, you know, the, the bulk of the Northwest and Northeast that have seen, you know, attacks uh, by militants and bandits and soft targets, actually the core of attacks in recent times in this region. So this issue of our security, you know, you know, has to be put in place. We just have to be sure that when they go back, they are not actually on their own again and uh, before we know it there'll be talks of uh, you know this uh, innocent people being attacked by you know unknown gunmen the usual term that we describe and um, these uh, criminals and these uh, killers so um so it brings us to one i mean the, the good thing or i don't know if it's good or if it's bad but the point here is this is just one camp we're talking about i mean you have different there's camps. several camps there's yeah. several camps in you know Borno state, you yes. know in Borno state in different parts of the country. you also have in bakasi yeah. you also have the uh idp camps in bakasi yeah. and that is another story entirely for a completely another day, different one. you know yeah. because you have a case where people are being neglected nothing is actually happening and they are and, from nigerians and, and what have you and we have a government so um, let me even start with the, you know, how safe is, is it for our kids to go to school? Mm -hmm. Now, with the fact that concerns have been raised, uh, and we are folding our arms. You hear situations where state governors will say, okay, we have to short schools, we have to do X, Y, Z. I mean, shorting school, is that the solution? Let's close schools because there's an attack. Why don't we address the issue from, I mean, the root cause? What is the root cause of all of this? Why do we have to short schools? Why are we not looking at what is causing the issue? Uh, I mean, in the, in, in the medical terms, you will hear them say preventive medicine. 
Mm. And that's preventive in a sense that if you do X, Y, Z, you will not even get to that point where people will be displaced in the first instance. So what are we doing to ensure that people, more persons are not displaced? I really do not have the figures, I mean, to put out there, mm. but you can't imagine how many persons are, you know, have been displaced from their ancestral homes. So I'm, I'm talking about returning to school and how safe it is. You remember the time where, you know, the Safe School Initiative Program was in, remember, introduced yes, in 2014, shortly mm. after the kidnap of, you know, the Chibok girls. Mm -hmm. And the essence of this program monies were released Big time. Uh, lots of monies were released you know for that particular purpose but you ask yourself today how save are our schools now our the essence of that initiative was unsafe. to uh, ensure that you have perimeter fencing around some of the schools because these schools if you actually i haven't really uh lived in the north but you know to uh, the fact that you probably would travel on your way maybe to abuja and all of that you probably pass you know a few of those places and you find out that um the, the, some of these uh, schools are in isolation. I mean, these schools are in isolation. And that's why it's very easy, you know, for these attacks to actually happen. They don't live in... I'm not saying that even if they're in around, they are around communities or areas where, you know, there's a lot of economic activities and then you have people that it's not possible that they could be attacked. But my point here is um, the essence of that initiative of that program that was introduced was to ensure that we have perimeter fencing. So how many of the schools do we have, you know, uh, that fencing? How safe is that uh, at these schools now that we're asking that this person should go back because what are they going back to are they going back to crime and criminal criminality because people you can't just expect that people will just you know return back to what they mm -hmm. become very idle would they begin to take up arms and you know that so it, it's really really encompassing and i'm thinking that you know as a government as a people we need to sit back and think about what we're about to do you know before we just ru rush and double into anything mostly it is really, 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 really pathetic to know that, um, you know, the life of the average Nigerian is not actually really considered, you know, for what it is worth. Because at the end of the day, we just uh, put out policies, we just bring out statement and say that we are doing this, you know, without having really taken our time to, you know, examine how far these policies would go and uh, just what effect negatively or positively it would um, have on these people. Because at the end of the day, there will be so much talk of um, renewed crimes and of course uh, people still, you know, living in fear, not knowing, uh, you know, if they are safe when they sleep or if their houses or their schools uh, would be attacked uh, uh, next. All of these are just uh, issues that, uh, you know, are mind-boggling over time. And we seem to be, you know, going about in circles when it comes to policies and, uh, and programs of government resettling people when um, adequate uh, you know provisions but I would have loved to have uh, the SA media who of um, the Borono state government who was supposed to join us to actually uh, do some of um, this uh, do justice to some of those questions and these issues that we have raised uh, on the show today but unfortunately I guess we might have to bring him back again on the show to clarify some of these uh, gray areas that we have actually postulated so it is very very simple as much as I'm not a security expert or I'm not an authority and I don't live in this place sometimes just like and uh, took actually spoke this morning with us he talked about the issue of common sense mm -hmm. so it, it's just common that if these persons were displaced, you find out why were they displaced. Mm -hmm. Are we uh, putting out measures to ensure that all of these conflicts, whatever conflicts, whatever issues, you know how we live in Nigeria and we feel that because we're not uh, experiencing the conventional world, that we're not in war, we're actually experiencing war, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm, I'm saying that, you know, uh, the fact that we're not carrying guns, I'm not shooting at you, uh, I'm not taking cover, we're not taking covers and all of that, it is. So um, the point would now be government should go back and begin to, and we, we should not be waiting at this point in time. How long have these persons been in these camps? So if we're saying there's a plan to resettle them, 70,000 naira, 100,000 naira is not enough. That's, that does not it solve the problem. Never, it can never and I'm, be I'm pleading. I don't know if I should go on my knees and beg the government <laughs> across there. Let us stop throwing monies at people and Nigerians. It's not just throwing money. Money there's this adage, everything. You know, there's this thing that says that if you actually, you, you should not give people money, but you rather teach them how to fish. The mm. point here is we should, you know, because these are structural issues, we should be able to address some of these issues. Okay? Mm, so I'm saying, sure. let the government sit back. And prior to this time, 
want to believe that they're already looking at the drawing board and find out what caused this conflict and uh, what they led to these people displaced. They, they and then they should put the measures to ensure that these persons are not, this does not happen. Now, mm -hmm. to say you want to resettle them, please, where are they going back to? Do they, still, do they still have houses if to go back to? And how houses. safe are these houses? So government should ensure that they are not going to be exposed to more attacks. They are protected because it's government's responsibility. True. It's simple. The schools, they have to go back to schools. They have to go back to their businesses and all of that. So it's just that we, these concerns have been raised. We're hoping that uh, it, it's simple that some of these issues would have been addressed. But how, how much time do we have? We're looking at the deadline of November, November 30th. 30th. So today is just uh, 25th, Tuesday, and then we have five more days just before the 30th. Mm. So it calls for a lot of concern. Uh, that, that's the much, but I'm hoping that you know we would have more answers. I'm thinking that you know we have to call this a wrap at this point in time. We really do appreciate your uh, uh, time, and we thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We hope you actually enjoy it. And if you missed out on any of any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on any part of our social media uh, platform on Facebook and Instagram it's at Plus TV Africa and on YouTube it's a Plus TV Africa lifestyle. I am Messi Boku. And I'm Justin Akademi. Many thanks for being a part of the show. We return again at top of the hour 7am tomorrow. Bye for now.